Radio Engineering, Graphics and Design Learners. In my previous video, I showcased and introduced to you the practical assessment task for grade 12 learners in 2021, specifically with regard to the civil pet. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to hack your pet. And we're going to do the first version of a series of videos. And this one will specifically address the design brief, specifications, constraints, your management plan, and I'm going to show you a couple of key things with regarding to your site plan. Let's get going. Okay, so I'm going to take my highlighter and I'm going to talk through your practical assessment task, the civil for grade 12 engineering. Now this document you should have received from your uh, teacher. I've added a link in the description if you would like to do a direct download of it. Let's first look at we're going to take your time, read through this, and carefully highlight a couple of things that's important for you to understand. Now, firstly, it starts with the words, your client. In other words, you are representing an architectural firm or a design company, and your client, client owns Stand 82, which is visible for you on the second page. We'll talk through that in a moment. This property is situated on top of a steep embankment overlooking a river, which lies on the southeastern side. The river forms the boundary. This is important. The river forms a boundary between your client's property and a nature reserve on the opposite side of the river. All the properties on the northwestern side of the river are ideally situated to observe the animals. So this is key here. You are designing something which needs to give the ability for its occupants to observe nature, observe animals uh, when they're at the river. The client is in the final stage of acquiring stand 81 and 82, the two adjacent properties to stand 82. These three properties will form part of an upmarket. Okay, very important word here. It's an exclusive upmarket, timeshare resort. In other words, we're not looking at two star. Um, Development here, it's going to be a five star upmarket timeshare resort. Before the timeshare units for the resort are developed, your client wants you to design. Okay, this is key. Your client wants you to design. What are you required to do? You need to design an enclosed single story brick structure containing the general reception area for the resort and a day spa. Okay, let's have a look at that. It's a enclosed, there's a roof over it, single story, can I build a double story? No. Brick structure containing the general reception and the day spa. Those are the key primary problems that you have to solve with your solution. And this will then initially be used to attract potential investors in this project. The structure will forthwith be referred to as the building. Okay. So this, people, is a key paragraph for you to make sure you understand. Let's look at the first paragraph that follows after this. The proposed new building must be sited, in other words, positioned, sited between what? The municipal sewer line and the southeastern building line, and it must have a modern entrance. Okay, let's just stop here. Two key things here. Where is it sited? Where is it positioned? The municipal sewer line and the southeastern building line. Between those. Let's look at the site plan now for a moment. This you all also have received. It's part of the document. Now what I'd like to highlight here is they will re or they've given you a north arrow. So let's take our time. We're just going to emphasize this. This is north, south, and then your axis for west. And east lies here. Okay. Now, if you look in this direction, this is your southeastern border. Okay. Here's the river, southeastern border. This is in this direction. Okay. Um, your Blessbrook Street here is in the northwestern border. Okay. Why this is important for a couple of reasons. Your sun will come up in the east. Your noon sun will be round about northwest and it will set in the west. In other words, the, the side that faces my right hand now, that will be the nice sun coming into your uh, development. And 
it's part of one of the specifications that there must be lots of light, natural light coming in. So keep this in mind, the direction of the sun. Your river side here will actually be the shadow side of your development. Okay, where is it positioned? It's between the municipal sewer line. This is this line here and your north uh, southeastern boundary line. And you can see here, this is the 30 meter boundary line. In other words, this distance here is 30 meters, okay? The distance here is 50 meters, okay? Which means that we have for ourselves, we subtract these two from the 115 meters that you have in the total uh, length of this site, you've got about, seven, um, sorry, 45, 45 meters that you can have to build here. And on this side, it's about 74 okay, meters. So it's a massive area where you can position your home in, okay, uh, or the development in. So we're going to do a full discussion on the site plan. Uh, we'll have a video for that. But what I want to add with this is just look at these contour lines, okay. They are five meters uh, fall from between them, okay? That's actually a typo, that should, uh, oh, that's interesting. That's 440, that's right, 440, 445, 440 again. So there's almost like a bit of a hill. If you would do a section of this, and I'm just gonna move this up to try and show you how easy it is to do a section. Let's take, for instance, this is your area where you're gonna build in. All you can do is, round about here, just draw a line, and you'll do another line run about this contour line. And then here we'll do a couple of more lines closer, almost in line with each one of the contours. Okay, you can actually do this on a separate page. Okay, you don't have all these other writing. So we'll do 440 as a benchmark. Okay, then we'll do 445. We'll do, there's again 440. Oh, sorry, 440, 445 should be here, sorry. That one is 435, okay, 430, 425, etc. Okay, so it starts at 440. On this building line, it's at 445, so it's going a little bit up. At this building line, we're back at 440, and then we're going to go to 435, 430, 425, and 420. So the slope here, if I had to just draw it in, you've got a very steep end here. Then we are going to our highest point of this property. This is kind of a section, right? Sorry, there we go. A section of this property. So there's a little bit of a hill. It's actually very close to a, 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 a flattish part. And here at the bottom, we have a river. Okay, so that would be a section of the actual contours here, but that's just for interest sake. And your, your actual development will be round about here. We'll just do a quick sketch there. Okay, that's your positioning just for interest sake. All right, let's go back to the actual design brief then. If we look at this, so there's the positioning between the municipal and the southeastern building line, and it must have, okay, a modern entrance with large doors that faces Blaise Block Street. Now let me show you why am I highlighting this. On a separate page for, page for yourself, just split this up a bit, okay. Start off by doing a rough draft of your specifications. You're going to have general, general specifications, okay, that is applicable to the entire development. Then you can have some subcategories. So, um, for instance, you will have your reception area. That's part of this development, okay? And it will have its specifications. We will have our um, spa, and it will have its own specifications. Let's look at, at um, trying to populate some of these, okay? So, first things first, the... Um, Entrance must have a modern entrance, so that will be under reception, modern entrance. So you can just start writing that down. Entrance, that's first specification. Second one, must have large doors. So you can write 
entrance must have large doors. Okay. Third specification that the doors must face Blessbrook Street. Okay, so or either you can say entrance. All right, must face Blessbrook Street. So you will go through this document, okay, and you're just doing a rough draft of your actual different components, specifications. Okay, let's take a further look. The large doors must lead into a general reception area. So that's another specification. Which, what about the reception area here? It must have ceilings, must have ceilings, and those ceilings must be four meters high. The floor area, no less than 65 square meters. All of these specifications still for our reception. To create one larger open area where guests can sit to enjoy eats and drinks, the reception area must have aluminium stacking doors. Again, a specification. And what about that? Must open onto a 80 square meter timber deck. So for the timber deck, you can have another section here that says timber deck must have 80, 80 square meters. And what about this timber deck? Another specification, it must overlook the river below. The timber deck must have a secure railing of one meter high. We're on all sides. And to ensure the building is disability friendly, that's actually another specification here for the entire building, which can come under general. All the floors and the timber deck must be on the same level. Another specification. Now just on the disability, if it's disability friendly, they don't elaborate it in this, but the disability friendly, friendly implies that the bathroom, the entrance area must have wheelchair access. Okay, so keep that in mind when you get to the actual designing. So make sure you add this under your general tab. Leading off the general reception area must be what? A small coffee shop. Now look here, admin office, male and female toilet facilities, as well as the entrance to the day spa. Okay, so we've got another subcategories for our actual specification. Because look here, using standardized aluminum stacking doors, a small coffee shop must open on into the reception area. Now, as a coffee shop will be selling non-alcoholic beverages and prepared food on the go, it only requires what? A space for a large fridge must be made available within your coffee shop. Preparation and serving counters must be part of the coffee shop. A double sink part of the coffee shop. And limited to 12 square meters. This people can be a, be a constraint. It's a limit. You cannot exceed something 12 square meters. What about the toilets? Female toilet must have hand wash basin. Male toilet... Uh, must have a toilet, single wall mounted urinal and hand wash. Again, these are specifications for your actual toilets. Okay, let's look at the spa. The total area of the day spa, which will be expanded at the later stage, may not exceed 100 square meters. It must consist of what? Open area with a small indoor pool. And this is actually a very key part of the actual project. Treatment room, again specified 12 square meters. Small staff room with built-in counter, single sink, change room, open area must be large enough to serve a as a reception and seating area of the day spa. The change room must have separate toilet, hand wash, a shower, wall mounted beds, four lockers and ample space to change. Can you see how much detail is there just in the spa part? This is all just on that spa. Okay, so don't Neglect this paragraph here. Lots of specifications for you. Then the building must have a pitched roof design. Very important. Okay. Can't have any alternative to a pitched roof. That in such a way will also cover half of the timber deck. Now this is an important sentence. Because earlier it said that this timber deck must be 80 square meters. Now they're saying that 50% of this, otherwise, in other words, 40 square meters, must be covered by your roof. Okay, so keep that in mind when we come to the design part. Due to the high humidity levels next to the river, the roof covering must be aluminium sheeting, uh, aluminium windows, aluminium door frames must be used. People, all of this is specifications. All the rooms and areas in the building must have, what, sufficient electrical lighting, switch socket outlets, and all the rooms facing out to it must have windows that will let ample natural light. That's where the north arrow comes in. 
ample light and you only get that when you are facing north. All sewer and wastewater pipes from the building must be connected to the existing sewer line on the property. So just if we look at this, there's plenty of specifications that you need to incorporate in your actual design. And I want to just bring you back to the site plan here quickly because the direction of flow with your sewer here is going to be important for your actual sewer connection that they refer to here in the bottom. Okay, that is... Um, a quick overview of these two items. Let me show you actual pad and how important it is to get this right. Okay, so these are one of my previous students and I love the way that they did their specifications and constraints. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Um, their specifications, they divided into different categories. Of course, this was something else that they designed, but again, they had a general area they had the reception, and then it was consulting rooms for doctors. But you'll do the same. You'll have your reception area, you'll have your spa, spa you'll have your restaurant, you'll have your um, uh, uh, female and male toilets, etc. So make sure you take a look at this kind of layout. Okay, then the management plan that is also part of this very first part. Um, here's an example of a management plan. And I've, I'm going to add for you also in the link in the description, the one that I've prepared for my own students to help them manage their pet. Okay, now what's nice about this is you actually have four columns. You have uh, the components of the pet that you have to adhere to. You have how many pages they will require and your due dates. And then you can add in your actual due dates on the right hand side. So please don't copy my necessary for word for word, but this is an example of a management plan. That is what's required as part of this very first part in your pet. And you can see how um, one of my students did it previously. I'll show you another one. Okay, here's another example. It's a bit light, but you can see again the full list of components, the proposed dates and the actual dates, and they added even the extra signature column and this is nice because it actually shows that you've used it to manage your actual pace of work. Okay so with that said that's a quick overview. Um, make sure you do your best in this time. Make sure to watch this video and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching. Now it's your turn.